Hey, welcome. This, my name is Dominic Karuba, but you should know that by now watching these videos. Uh, the last, we're here today, the last step for this Follow Up Friday is the T in the rapport process. It's how to test close. You've, um, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna remind you of a couple of things. This is a short video today, shorter than the last couple of videos. But I'm gonna just cover, make it a little longer by covering a little more information because I believe repetition is the mother of skill. And as you practice this each week, I might say something this week that you maybe heard before, but now it'll resonate, catch your ear, and actually give you some insight, something to pay attention to, something to practice. So remember, negotiation's a, a leadership skill. It's really about being in relationship. And so everything, everything, everything that transpires in this course will reveal something about you as a person, as a leader, and in relationship if you'll only pay attention to it. So the, the goal of this follow-up program is that really you get in the habit of doing certain things by keeping your commitment so that when the commitments fail, you actually get feedback and learn how to adjust your behavior. Um, you know, it's, it's too hard to change your behavior, but really identifying and noticing those triggers to your behavior will have you be more effective at controlling your behavior. So if you have kept your word uh, every day since we left the program in Chicago, then that means you might be playing a really small game. If you have broken your word consistently and never done anything, and you're just watching this first video, and you're like, oh my God, that just says you're not paying attention and something's missing, the presence of which might make a difference. So, you know, notice what triggers your behavior away from keeping your word instead of triggering your behavior to keep your word. So, in as much as you're trying to develop new habits of relationship as a negotiator, you're also trying to avoid those bad habits. And one of the main bad habits is we just don't keep the word to ourselves. So, uh, remember the agreements we had, maintain confidentiality, so anything personal, keep personal, always giving your best. So, are you giving your best? Great question to ask yourself every day, did I give my best? If it's a yes or no, let it go. Like whatever it is, ask yourself, reflect. Have I been on time? Have I been at the designated place, at the designated time, ready to go? Um, am I creating open dialogue? Am I listening? Am I not? Am I talking to the person, not behind their back? Am I having fun? Like, am I learning to experience the joy of what I'm doing while I'm doing it, not stressing about anything else? That's fun. Am I respectful? Am I, am I, am I aware of others' differences? And respecting that and not learning to be flexible to that instead of rigid and waiting for them to be flexible with me. And of course, no side conversations is relevant uh, unless you're having that conversation with that little voice in your head where it's just judging things instead of being present to what's actually happening. So remember, the mindset you'll need to get maximum value is to open yourself up to what you don't know you don't know. And that takes an inquiry or asking a better question. And we've been really working on asking some of those questions so that you see something that's always been there, but you didn't notice yet. Something that can make a difference. So when you run into problems and you run into situations, you know, everything's great when it's going towards your, you know, as planned. But when the plans change, the circumstances that get affected, you're not getting the results you thought you would get by that time. Your expectations aren't met. Bam, you're upset. It's so time to ask a question about what's, what's good about this situation that I haven't noticed yet. Did I invent the stress? Did I invent the upset by creating an expectation or or did I, you know, cause the circumstances to go the way they did so that I would be trapped into not producing the result? So think about that as you as you look at it. Ask yourself that better question. Are you asking questions? Are you being curious? Right? If you can be curious, that may be a great way to define your success. I know I'm being successful by reflecting and learning from every result that I produce, intentionally or unintentionally. Because you produce all your results in life. If you're judging them, as success or not success, you're judging the wrong thing. Those are results. And if you're comparing your, your results to someone else's, that's not very useful. So comparing yourself to what you said you wanted, what means something to you, that's how you know you're being successful. Because the only person that you're really comparable to is yourself. Because you're the only person that brings the entire array of experience knowledge, uh, circumstances with you everywhere you go. It's like pig pen in the cloud, right? You bring your own cloud. Don't compare yours to someone else's. They have a whole different reason why theirs is the way it is. So do you define success by comparing yourself to others or by comparing yourself to how you're being in relation to yourself? 
just a quick thought. Because in order to be successful, you got to know what your outcome is. And that part of knowing your outcome is knowing where you're at and where you want to be. And a time frame just gives you a, a context into which to relate to your activity. So we're a little further than halfway through this program. And, you know, it's up to you to know if you're closer to where you want to be or further away. And if you're taking the actions you said you would take or you're not. Are you paying attention to the results? Because the results give you insights into your values and your behavior and what's driving you as opposed to you driving them. And then are you making changes? Are you being flexible in your result, or in your approach so that your approach is changing, not just, you know, your intensity or volume, right? Are you being the leader you always wanted to be when you're negotiating these contracts? Are you coming in there knowing you're number one because you're number one and holding the context of partnership, of contribution, of give and take. So that's win, win, win. Or is it, I need mine, you get yours later, or you get yours, I'm, I got to sacrifice mine. It's win, lose. So if you don't know what that looks like, then find somebody who does and follow what they do. I was talking to my marketing coach today and he said, look, you need marketing conditioning. What do you say? Marketing cardio. That's it. Marketing marketing's like cardio. It's not something you can do every once in a while. So you got to practice every single day. Are you practicing your cardio physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally? If you're not, how's your marketing going to, where are you going to fall in line with that? So again, find a role model if you want to model success. Otherwise, just keep plugging away, doing your cardio. Look, good runners get better with a coach, but you can be a better runner if you just run. Some of you guys need to run or just walk. Talk to your doctor first. I'm not a medical professional, but I've seen you. If you're happy with the way you are, great. But if you're not, stop complaining and start doing it. And the barrier to that maximum value that you say you want is that little voice in your head, judging and comparing you against others, you against yourself, you against some ideal, not just you where you're at and where you're going. That's a different kind of comparison. That's analysis. This is just plain old comparison. That's not healthy. So pay attention to that because remember, you're making three decisions all the time, what you're focusing on, what it means to you, and what you decide to do about it. Your every action is guided by these three things. Let me see if I can put my little camera in a place that will make it so you can see it a little better. So what's controlling your focus and your ability to create rapport has everything to do with the questions you're asking yourself in that rapport process. Because remember, rapport is about building relationship and you know so I was, most of you guys are men and men are not good at relationships naturally we need a strategy we need a plan we need you know a system to follow that's what software is all about keep it in existence so you don't forget but are you being aware of yourself are you learning to control yourself are you paying attention to them and how they control themselves and are you tailoring your approach your messages is it changing or are you being rigid in your approach here's how you know you're either getting or not getting the results you wanted. So remember, let's talk about that building rapport, right? That, that model of relationship. Who are, is the customer to you? Who are you to them? Do you have a big enough vision of who that, what that is, how it, what it looks like? If not, whoops. If not, you better, you better change your, 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 your shift your context. Ask a better question about who they are they, for you or who they could be for you. And you're observing their style, the way they interact with you, the way they interact with others to give you insights as to what they need so that you can bring that to the party. Or look, you can wait for them to figure out you. When it becomes so important that they learn you when you're the buyer, not the seller. So that's why salesmen are so great. They're the seller, right? They know that the buyer, they can wait for the buyer. They can change and adapt. Selling the way the customer buys is your unique advantage. And then are you asking those questions, right? Are you asking those questions that, that give you the language of their motivation, their pain, their pleasure, their outcomes? Are you taking down those magic words so that you could send it back to them in, in their solution, in their words, using their hot buttons? What are their pain words, pleasure words, outcome words? Are you paying attention to those things and then using them as you present possible potential solutions? Or are you just saying using whatever lingo you're comfortable with? Are you lazy? Are you doing the work? 
Now we're going to talk today. Really simple test. Test the agreement. What are those words and phrases you would use to test the agreement? To know that uh, what you're offering is what they need based on their feedback and making adjustments or, you know, walking away, you know, making sure that you say this is not a good deal for both of us. So it's not a good deal for either of us. Right? I mean, if it's not a good deal. It's not a good deal. So the questions you ask, you know, to test are those open ended questions. But let's talk about these other questions. We'll, we'll get to those in a minute, but we'll talk about those two decisions. Who are they to you? Who are you to them? Determining your approach, are you using the platinum rule? Are, are they express or control? Are they indirect or direct in their communication? That'll give you insight as to what style they are. Are they a results driver? Driver is the style name when you go study this, but they're focused on results. Or are they focused on ideas, fun, excitement, you know, stimulation? They're expressing that it may not be what they really want, but it is what they're talking to you about. Or are they more people oriented? Are they amiable? Or are they data oriented? You know, they're analytical. You need to know these things, identify those styles so that you can plot and plan your communications. And by the way, practice all four because people change in the moment and you have four different customers. So you have to be the one prepared with all four styles anyway. Be ready to ditch the one you're with to pick up the one you have for them. Because everybody has all four, but whatever model or mode they're in, pick it up. Communicate to them. So pay attention to their behavior. Make those two decisions and adapt to their needs. That's the secret to, to connecting with somebody at a deeper, more meaningful level. Are you paying attention to your communication? Are you asking questions that clarify, which give you power? Do you have the responses memorized? So when they give you something, you know what to give back in return to create that dialogue, to deepen the listening, to deeper the understanding, to understand before being understood. Picking up that motivating language, gathering all things. These are disciplines, these are skills. Oh, whoops. And then we talked about the, the pain, pleasure, outcome questions, right? Those things that uh, really decide what their motivation is, right? Are they, are you paying attention to, um, you know, what they like about what's currently going on, what they don't like about what's currently going on in the situation and what they would change to make different and getting the words from that. You know, deeply understanding your client's needs. Not their want and their wants, but their needs, their wants, their desires, knowing what causes them pain, knowing what brings them pleasure, knowing what they really want in terms of outcome, getting clarity on those three things. Oh, come on. That's being of value and of service to somebody. You can throw money at a problem, but if that's your only hammer, all your problems are going to look like that nail. And all you're going to do is throw money at something that really a little bit of human touch would make a difference. So what what behaviors do they associate with pleasure? What are their values based on their personality style, their buying decisions, their methodology? Tell me what's great. Tell me what you like about. Describe what your current what, what, what works for you. And find out what they want to avoid. The more and remember, people will do more to avoid pain than they will to seek pleasure. So this is a critical element and the outcome. Are you clear on what they really want, what they really need, what the impact of those things they say they want? Look, every kid wants cake. Can you give it to them three meals a day? Do they really need that? Is that the outcome? Is that really, the, is that satisfying their ends values? Look, nobody wants money. They want the thing that money means to them. Are you paying attention to that? Are you giving them those higher values so that you can address that, speak to that, avoid all the noise. So get clarity. And then when you're talking back and speculating on what you might put together or what, you know, what programs you have that might work and how they might implement it based on what their personality style is, you get, 
you bring relevant solutions so that you're ready to test. So really relevance conversations are about the same thing as testing. That's why it's such a small section in the manual. But testing the agreement to ensure it meets all the expectations for both parties. Future testing it. Following it through to make sure that it works today but also works tomorrow. It works with changes to the environment. It works with success. And it works with failure. Letting them know, hey, if you don't do this, are you okay with the penalty? I'm going to enforce the penalty, but are you okay with the penalty? I don't want to do it at all if you're not okay with the penalty. Look, things happen. Sometimes it's not me. If your behavior, your market, your implementation limits my behavior, I have nothing to do with it. I'm just enforcing what's already there. But if it gets really good, are you okay if, it, if you're paying out things that are real? Is it a good deal for you if they really exceed? And make sure that the contract's right. Make sure you understand from the internal point of view as well as the external point of view. So here's some questions you can ask, open-ended questions that lead to a test. Like, tell me about, um, uh, tell me about your situation. Tell me about what you, how you react to this contract. Share with me what your goal is in this area. Describe the perfect situation. These are kind of outcome questions. So when you ask these questions, please explain how you e execute. Help me understand what you do when we find out, when, when you find out that you're not living up to the contract, when you intend for it to happen. What does it look like? What else? Say more about that. Get clarity. How do you do it? What do you do? Those kind of things, right? So, but other things like test questions. Say, well, in my opinion, if I were to present this, this, and this, would that be good for you? What would you think if, what would happen if, what would cause you to, what would prevent you from, those questions are built right in the testing. But you're making sure the test part is not just see if they'll buy. They have to buy. They're number one in the market, they have to buy. The question is, are they gonna buy from you and are they gonna be satisfied with the results and are you gonna be satisfied? Is it gonna work? And you know, to the best of your leadership's guidance and development, you do that. So again, when you're doing this, when you're asking these questions, a couple things you got to do. You got to remember to identify their personality. You got to listen. So practice listening. You got two ears, one mouth. Practice listening. Pay attention to what, how they interact with you. Do they like the small talk? Do they direct or indirect? Do they ask or tell? Do they want facts and data? Do they general concepts? Do they talk about people. And just remember, your experience of every interaction you have with customers is based on the three decisions you're making. What are you focusing on? What are you making it mean? And what have you decided to do, consciously or unconsciously? So remember that little exercise that said focus when you were looking around the room for everything green, and then I asked you to look for everything red? So how do you control your focus? Well, the first thing you do is you ask yourself a better question. You ask you. you Pay attention to when you're asking those why questions that are part of a complaint. Why does this always happen to me? Why do they do this? Why is always this that? And it's some version of that. Don't get me tied down right. It's a disempowering question. You know, when you ask it, you're looking at the wrong thing and you're not getting the answers you need to resolve the problem. So shift those why questions, which disempower you, to how do I look at this situation better so I can come to a resolution? How do I... You know, and then craft the question so that it changes your state. If it doesn't change your state, you're not asking a good question. This is a fundamental shift from being a victim, looking at circumstances to determine why you have the results, or looking for reasons. Instead of looking for reasons, look for resources. How do I shift your focus from reasons to resources? Resources give you access to new actions which allow you to produce those results you're committed to. So remember, the secret to long-lasting relationships is about keeping your agreements, acknowledging broken agreements, and then restoring those agreements. And the decision to give the benefit of the doubt or not be suspicious so that you can discover something that you might have done or just something that, you know, maybe you don't know in order to demonstrate your trustworthiness to build that relationship. That's the secret, keeping your word even if it sucks. 
Remember that? Now your individual conditioning plan, whatever you came up with at that day, if you're still doing it, remember that's you're doing it for your own personal mastery. It's that continuous commitment. It's a it's a commitment to continuous improvement in everything you do. But just you just picked one thing. That's where you start. And then when you get to that mastery sense, you can create results out of any circumstance. It's like magic. You just work with what you got. But in order to do that, it starts with knowing what's important to you, what's most important. When you get good at distinguishing what's most important to you and to determine if you're living it or not, you'll find out if your commitments are in line. Are your sacrifices in order? Are you committed? Are you sacrificing? Are you doing something that leads you in that direction, that demonstrates that commitment, that demonstrates that sacrifice? That's what a discipline is, it's doing something. And are you accountable to someone else? Not yourself. You can't be accountable to yourself. You're not reliable. This is how you build the skills over time. That wax on, wax off. It is what you're learning whether you realize it or not. You're becoming a better negotiator as you practice keeping your word just by reading 10 minutes a day if that's what you said. Or you're doing it, up your game. Up the skill level as you build the habit. Build a stronger and stronger habit. Go from white to yellow to red to brown to black belt in your skill. Because remember the probability of implementation, right? If you just hear something, it's a 10% chance you'll do it. If you decide to do it, it's just 25% chance. Decide when you'll do it, it's 40% chance. Decide, plan on how you do it, it's still only a 50-50 shot you do it. But if you commit to someone else that you will do it, take on that idea, and have a specific future appointment with the person you're committed to, like every day, and the time you'll report whether you've done it or not, like midnight, you're running a 95% chance of you producing what you said you produce in the spirit of your integrity muscle. That's what this program is really at the core of, building your integrity muscle. So your 30, 60, 90 day project, are you, were you clear on your outcome? Are you, were you clear on the skill you're practicing? Are you clear on how you're supporting each other with your triad? So Billy, Dennis, and Maurice, are you doing it? Mike, Seth, and Brett, are you doing it? Scott, Eric, and Lee, are you doing it? Ryan Mercer, Paul, and Jason, are you doing it? Ken, Jesse, and Derek, are you doing it? Trent, Dan, and Tom, are you doing it? Jim, Derek, and Roy, are you doing it? Bud, Brad, and Ryan, are you doing it? Jonathan, Brian Hart, and Christian, are you still doing it? Jeremy, Jeff, and Tony, are you still doing it? Thomas, Mark, and Andy, are you still doing it? If you're not, Figure out why you're not and keep going. Because you're missing out on the benefits for yourself and your job if you don't. This is the practice that makes the difference between champions and non-champions. Look, it's football season. You got a lot of things that will distract you. But don't ever mistake, even the losingest pro football team is better at football than you and me. Because they practice, they give, they and they haven't figured out how to be a champion. And the number ones aren't doing so good this year. The number ones of last year aren't doing so good this year. So championship is not a guarantee. You got to stay on it. Stick with it. You keep working. Because comfort, comfort is the enemy of success. Complacency, that's a, that's a guarantee for your competition that they'll beat you. <clears throat> Don't get caught like that. Leave it all on the battlefield. Leave it all. Leave it all. Leave it all on the field. All right. See you guys next Friday. We're I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna jump back into the manual. And uh, if you haven't gotten the manual and you need a copy, email me. I'll send it to you. All right. Make it a great day. Keep following up every day. Your daily discipline determines your destiny. Make it a great day.